Okay, listeners, buckle up, because this deep dive is a real head-scratcher. We're tackling a question that's had philosophers debating for centuries. What exactly is an individual? And it's a deceptively simple question, right? You'd think it'd be easy to define what an individual is, but trust me, it gets complicated fast. Oh, I believe it. So where are we starting this philosophical journey? Well, we're diving headfirst into excerpts from Giovanni Gentili's The Theory of Mind as a Pure Act. And let me tell you, this text is a wild ride. Sounds like we're in for a treat. So what's the game plan for unpacking this whole individual mystery? We're going all the way back to the 13th century to kick things off, tracing how this question of the individual has evolved over time. Okay, back to the 13th century it is. What was happening in the world of philosophy back then that got people so riled up about the individual? Imagine this. Heated debates, philosophers throwing around arguments left and right, all centered around whether your pet goldfish, let's call them bubbles, is just dot bubbles. <laughs> or if there's some kind of universal fish blueprint out there that makes him, well, a fish. A fish blueprint. Okay, now you've got my attention. Who were these philosophers and what were their arguments? These philosophical heavyweights were known as nominalists and realists. The nominalists, they were all about the individual. They'd say, Bubbles is unique. And while he might share traits with other goldfish, those are just names we give to a collection of individuals. There's no grand overarching fish blueprint in their view. That makes sense to me. Every goldfish is a little different, just like people. So where did the realists come down on this? They took the opposite stance. The realists argued that individuals like bubbles actually get their whole identity from these larger universal forms. So they'd say there is a real fish blueprint out there, and bubbles is just one variation of it. So are we saying it's like a cosmic cookie cutter? Are we all just variations on a theme, or are we each our own unique batch of cookie dough? It's a pretty big difference in how we see ourselves. You've hit the nail on the head, and here's where the debate gets really interesting. Both sides bring up valid points, but they both hit some pretty big roadblocks, too. How can we understand Bubbles as an individual without the general concept of fish? But if Bubbles is just a shadow of some perfect fish blueprint, how can we say he truly exists as his own little fishy self? It's like a philosophical puzzle where the pieces don't quite fit. So did anyone manage to make some headway with this whole individual universal dilemma? Well, fast forward a few centuries and along comes Descartes. You know, I think, therefore, I am that guy. Ah, yes. The king of introspection. How did his ideas shake things up? Descartes offered a glimmer of hope for the individual. Instead of getting bogged down in universals, he said, hey, let's focus on the thinking self for a second. Your very ability to think and question proves that you exist as an individual. I like that, like saying, even if there's a bigger plan, I'm still here experiencing it. Exactly. And then Kant came along and took things in a fascinating direction. He said that while we might never fully grasp the thing in itself, you know, the true essence of something, our minds are wired to connect concepts to our experiences. Okay, can you give me an example of what that means in our everyday lives? Sure. Imagine you're walking down the street and you see a dog. Your brain instantly goes, dog. <laughs> right. You've identified it based on a general concept of what a dog is. Right, because we have this idea of what a dog looks like, how it acts. But at the same time, that particular dog has its own quirks, its mm. own personality. It's not just dog, it's this dog here and now. I see what you mean. We're always bouncing between the general and the specific, the universal and the individual. Exactly. And this is where things get even more interesting as we move into the modern era. So how did this whole individual universal puzzle play out in the modern age? Did modern thinkers finally solve it? Well, they definitely threw a wrench in the works. Modern thinkers, especially those immersed in science, started to question those big universal ideas. What if those grand concepts aren't really absolute truths? What if they're more like tools? Tools? Yeah, tools we use to understand this incredibly complex reality, but not necessarily the full picture. I get it, like a map in the territory, right? The map can guide you, but it doesn't show every single detail. A perfect analogy. And this new perspective makes things very interesting for our individual universal debate. If our concepts are more like tools, then what does that even mean for us as unique individuals? My brain is definitely doing some gymnastics over here. <laughs> I mean, it's like saying we can appreciate the general human experience, but each individual's journey is just that individual. Exactly. And this is where Giovanni Gentili enters the scene with his own unique perspective. He's really interested in this concept of the positive. OK, hold on. When I hear positive, I'm thinking good vibes, motivational posters, that kind of thing. Not quite. We're talking about something much deeper here. 
Think of a sculptor working with a block of marble. The marble, that raw material, that's the positive. The sculptor shapes it, but they can't create something from nothing, right? They have to work with what's already there. Okay, I think I see where we're going with this, but how does marble relate to the individual? Well, Gentiles saw the positive as a reality that's already formed, fully realized. He actually distinguishes between two types, the subjective positive and the objective positive. Mm. The subjective positive is what we create in our minds, our thoughts, our ideas, our dreams. But the objective positive exists outside of us, independent of our thoughts. So the objective positive is like the marble, the raw material of reality that exists, whether we're thinking about it or not. Exactly. And here's where Gentile's argument gets really interesting. He suggests that the true individual, the core of who we are, might actually be found in this objective positive. We find it by encountering the world around us. Wow, that's a lot to unpack. It's like our identities aren't just shaped by what's going on in our heads, but also by something bigger than ourselves. You got it. And that brings up a whole bunch of questions about nature versus nurture, about free will. What does it even mean to be an individual? if we're shaped by this objective positive. So if we're shaped by this objective positive, this external reality, does that mean we're just along for the ride? Do we even have a say in who we become? Now that's the million dollar question. And Gentile doesn't exactly give us a straight answer. He wants us to really think about this. What if our choices, our deepest desires, our entire life path, what if it's all already part of this larger positive reality? So it's like asking, is free will just an illusion? Are we all just living out a script that's already written? That's the heart of it. Gentile is pushing us to think, really think, about whether our choices, as real as they feel to us in the moment, are ultimately expressions of this larger reality that we're just a part of. This objective, positive idea, it really makes you think differently about what it even means to be an individual. It's both humbling and kind of awe-inspiring at the same time. That's the beauty of Gentile's work, right? Mm. He's not giving us easy answers. He's making us wrestle with these huge questions about who we are, how we fit into the bigger picture, all of it. It's definitely given me a lot to think about, that's for sure. And I feel like we've only just scratched the surface of Gentile's ideas here. We've only dipped our toes into this philosophical pool. But hey, that's the whole point, isn't it? Getting those brain cells firing. Hopefully, this deep dive gave you a new way to see this whole what is an individual question. It absolutely did for me. It seems like the mystery of the individual, it's far from solved. But just exploring these different perspectives has been amazing. That's what philosophy is all about. Embracing the journey, the exploration, even when it means ending up with more questions than answers. Couldn't have said it better myself. A huge thank you to you for taking us on this whirlwind tour. The pleasure was all mine, believe me. Always love a good philosophical deep dive. And to all our listeners out there, we hope this deep dive sparked your curiosity and left you thinking about your own individual journey. Until next time, keep those minds engaged.